I couldn't play the game like everybody else played it. Before I even stepped on that mound, I had to be a good fielder. Start off by catching the ball like this, catch the ball, kind of rotate it around, pulling the ball out, and throwing. Wipe off the pitching rubber, fresh start, new beginning. Look in, get my sign. I put the glove in front of my body. I wanted to hide my grip. Worried about the third base coach, worried about the first base coach. The ball was always spinning in my hand until I got over my head. I reach back, my grip is set, eyes still on the target. Second for one out, throws to first, got him. Big play by Jim Allen. The switch of that glove. How do you do that? Jim Abbott is a former MLB pitcher who played the sport despite having been born without a right hand. He was born and grew up in the East Village area of Flint, Michigan. Jim didn't let his disability get in the way of his life at a young age. I don't really remember it occurring to me though that I had a disability. Um, I, I probably became more apparent to me when I went to school, mixing in with other kids in a classroom and those environments, dealing with the, you know, the playground teasing and the, and the, the questions and the awkward glances. Jim fell in love with the sport of baseball when he was little and made it his goal to make it into the MLB one day. I really wanted to play baseball and my dad was, he was a high school football player, high school basketball player, he wasn't much of a baseball player but he bought me this glove, he went down to the drugstore and bought me this really cheap plastic glove. And we went out in the front yard and, and I just started, you know, we just tried to figure out how I could sort of twirl the glove towards my body and cradle the ball. And, and, glove and take it out and throw and then have the glove here and be able to slip it right back on. I spent a lot of time throwing a ball against a brick wall, you know, and it would bounce off quickly and I'd have to get the glove on quickly to field it and then I'd do it again and I'd do it again and I tried to get fast enough where I could fire it as hard as I could and catch it by the time it bounced back at me. He graduated from Flint Central High School as a superb pitcher and quarterback and in the 36th round of the 1985 Major League Baseball draft, he was drafted by the Toronto Blue Jays but did not sign and decided to play at the University of Michigan. For the three years he was at Michigan, Jim Abbott led them to two Big Ten championships and in 1987 he won the James E. Sullivan Award as the top amateur athlete in the United States, becoming the first baseball player to win the award. In addition, baseball was a demonstration sport at the 1988 Summer Olympics and Abbott pitched the final game, winning an unofficial gold medal for the United States. In 1989, Abbott joined the Angels starting rotation as a rookie without playing a single minor league game and finished 12-12 and with an ERA of 3.92 and finished 5th in the year's American League Rookie of the Year award voting. In 1991, Abbott went 18-11 for the Angels, posting the 4th lowest earned run average in the American League of 2.89, while pitching 243 innings. This resulted in him finishing 3rd in the American League Cy Young award voting. In the 1992 offspring, the Angels traded Abbott to the New York Yankees for their top minor league prospect first baseman J.T. Snow, pitchers Russ Springer and Jerry Nielsen. He had an up and down year on the Yankees, however on September 4th, 1993, Abbott pitched his most memorable game, a no-hitter against the Cleveland Indians. Hitters. Jim Abbott going to the sixth, Dwayne, has walked three, struck out two. The Indians do not yet have a base set. Four-nothing Yankees. He's been very stingy with his pitches as well, 69 through five. So he's in good shape there. It was the top of the ninth inning, and the Yankees were up four runs to zero. Jim Abbott was pitching phenomenally, with no hits, no runs, and five walks with four strikeouts. The Yankees hold a four-to-nothing lead. And just to stress the overall importance of this game beyond the personal accomplishment of a no-hitter, Lee Smith is up in the Yankee bullpen just in case. Buck Showalter and Tony Clollinger are prepared. Meanwhile, Jim Abbott sent to go. Slides outside by inches. 
The one two and a bouncer over the head of Abbott to Gallego one out in the ninth. Gallego to Mattingly. He's two outs away. It's pinch. Fly ball. Left center field. Long run. Bernie Williams. He's there. Two outs in the ninth as Bernie Williams tracked it down into left center field. With this catch, the fans are on their feet. Jim Abbott has a no hitter. Two outs into the ninth. Indians have not had a man pass first base. By Erga batting 318. And a ground ball to short. Bellardi. He did it. He did it. No hitter for Jim Abbott. Jim Abbott throws a no-hitter and shuts out the Cleveland Indians four to nothing. At every level, I remember having self-doubt. I remember, you know, moments of uncertainty and not knowing if I could play at, at that particular level. And every time, it, there was always somebody there who told me that I could do it. It's, it's just really hard to describe what the end of a no-hitter is like. You know, that countdown of outs. Um, the adrenaline excitement that you feel is, is it enveloping. You know, you feel it in your legs and you feel it in your hands and your arms. And when you run out there in that ninth inning and you get on the mound in Yankee Stadium and the people are literally jumping up and down in the stands and you see the umpire put his mask on, your catcher get down, it, it, it's, it, it overwhelms you, you know? And, and there is a certain amount of just letting it go trusting your pitches and, 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 and knowing that that much of it is all you can control and let's see what happens. You know, just because you do things a little bit differently doesn't mean you can't do them just as well.